Howdy friends, just following back up with our previous video. I said I was going to go through and talk about some of the vintage computers that uh, I had and scored uh, about a month or two ago on my way back from Florida. And uh, it was about 15 computers, they were all vintage. They ranged from 386, 486, and original Pentium. Uh, so I was just going to touch on a lot of those that I still had left. I've sold about 12 of them and only have about three left. But we're going to go through a couple more than three computers today. These are ones that I had before that score. So the one I'm currently looking at is a computer that I got when I was about 12 or 13 years old. So this particular computer is an IBM Model 70 386. Now, this computer is a little bit on the higher end. So this has the 25 megahertz CPU with the extended planar board and the CPU daughter board. It also has, I believe, a 120 megabyte hard disk drive, right? So the only one that you could get that was actually better than this one that they made for a short time was a uh, 486 25 megahertz Model 70. Uh, this one is not quite that good or quite that rare, but it is the better model. This is the 8570A16 model. And it survived my adolescence. Um, it didn't work for quite some time, so what happened is, back in the day, I was screwing around with it and trying to clean it or whatever, and as you know, secondhand systems that you get, especially the ones that you get from corporate America, which was part of the reason that these... Uh, had some issues with full-on corporate adoptants past their initial purchasing was the reference disks that were required whenever you add and remove hardware. So I was cleaning and removed part of the bracket that holds the PC speaker and uh, CMOS battery. Um, but lo and behold, I didn't have the reference disk to set it back up. So it was stuck on some uh, 161, 163 errors, time and date, CMOS reset. Um, so it sat in a closet for quite some time. Then I got a bug and wanted to bring it back to life again about a year ago. And what I was able to do was download and find the disk image for the appropriate reference disk. Awesome. Problem. The disk drive died. Wouldn't read the disks. Um, I tried and tried to get it working, cleaned it out, replaced the capacitors on the board, and unfortunately just wasn't able to bring it back to life. So went ahead and purchased a new floppy disk drive on eBay, and lo and behold, it worked. And with a new CBOS battery and my brand new reference disk, was able to bring it back to life and uh, it, was, it was happy, it was nice, it was great. So I'm glad that this thing, this thing is back in action. Um, the only thing that I have on order for this is a CPU upgrade. So there was something called a 486 DRX2. And it is, this particular flavor is 50 megahertz. This is a 25 megahertz system, so it is a clock multiplied Cirrus processor with one kilobyte onboard cache that should bring a nice performance bump. Uh, they're pretty rare processors, so this thing had to come from Europe, and uh, I was lucky to find one in a forum, so we'll see how that goes. Um, and then the other thing is they are recreating uh, AdLib MCA compatible sound cards. Check out eBay, they are there. Uh, they're about 60 bucks, that's four or five bucks shipping. Not bad at all. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna bite the bullet because I'm kind of waiting to see, hey, are these guys just gonna go crazy and get a, get a little bit ingenuitive and create a full-on Sound Blaster clone that's MCA compatible? Because, uh, you know, I'd, I'd pay a couple hundred bucks for that. Now, some of these guys that just want, <clears throat> you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars I've seen them go for on eBay for their MCA sound cards from back in the day. I mean, I, I think it's crazy. I'm never gonna pay that, but hey, if they find somebody to do it, God bless them, you know, capitalism. All right, 
So coming over to this, this was the one that I scored in that uh, Facebook Marketplace bonanza. Um, this is a pretty rare cat, and I actually like this computer. There were two of them. I sold one of them. This is called a Canon Innova Media MD4510. And it is a 486. Um, it didn't have a processor in it. It was missing processor, hard drive, CD-ROM drive. It was really kind of just the case, the motherboard and a few other components. So I went ahead and uh, we got a CD-ROM drive installed, floppy installed. I went ahead and put a 66 megahertz 486 DX2. Um, seemed to fit, fit it pretty, pretty well. I mean, that's uh, mid to high end. I call it middle of the road overall for 486. I think it's right in the middle when you consider it towards the later end. You had 120 and 166 and 133 megahertz 486s, and then on the low end, they were 25 megahertz when they first kind of came around. So uh, I, I, I feel like that's right in the middle of the road. I think this is a really nice computer. I think it's really cool. This is all plastic. All right, so this is kind of built like the uh, mid early 90s Mac computers. And uh, I know that it looks like it in the uh, footage here, but it actually really isn't that yellowed. It, it's actually stayed pretty nice and it's not all brittle and weak. You know, you don't have to worry about uh, the plastics breaking on you. It, it's held the test of time. Based on some of the research that I've done, these are actually uh, built by Acer. And then uh, Canon went ahead and slapped their badge on them. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely a computer I'm pretty fond of. We come over to this one right here. So this is another IBM. This is a personal computer 340, PC 340. Nothing terribly special about it. It's original Pentium computer. Um, this one I picked up off eBay a couple years ago. Uh, it needed a CD-ROM drive. As you can see, I went ahead and put this Philips in there. It doesn't really match as well as I would like it to, but it'll work for now. Uh, it's got a 166 megahertz Pentium. And if we come around over here to the back, you can see there in the top that we added USB 2.0 ports, which is absolutely fantastic. So here's the thing about these. You can find these particular cards on eBay all over the place, come from China, wherever. There's two kinds to look at. Early PCI was just kind of a nightmare and a headache as far as compatibility goes. And the first card that I bought had a VIA chipset. That VIA chipset is known for uh, having issues with uh, compatibility, especially with older stuff. I tried, I tried, I tried all kinds of drivers, every trick in the book that I had. I could not get it to work. So I went ahead and bought, bit the bullet. Uh, bought another one with the NEC chipset. Lo and behold, that worked perfectly. It's awesome. Functions the way it should. This this particular machine has Windows 98 Second Edition installed, so it has uh, USB drivers, even the 2.0, and uh, just allows me to add, believe it or not, uh, wireless internet. I've got an old school wireless G from Belkin to pop right in there and uh, I've installed this with 128 megabytes of RAM. I know that's pretty ridiculously high for an original Pentium, but if you want to do any kind of web surfing just to screw around, you kind of need as much RAM as you can get. Otherwise, they just don't want to, uh, they don't want to play nice, like really at all. So, we've looked at these three. And then I'm gonna come over here and check these out. Uh, these are two more that I kept from that uh, Facebook bonanza. Now, of these two, this one on the left is a 386 machine. Uh, needed a little bit of cleanup to get it to post. Uh, one of those had one of those Varda batteries that had been cut off, so it was no longer there. But 
Uh, some of the damage had been done, so got some isopropyl alcohol on the board, cleaned that up, soldered in a new battery, made sure all the traces had continuity, and uh, after that, um, and getting some of the RAM sorted out, uh, she posts, she works. Um, got a, about a 438 megabyte Western Digital hard disk drive installed, and this particular machine has a TI-486DLC chip running at 33 megahertz plus a math coprocessor. So it's uh, on the faster side of anything that you had as far as a 386 goes. Um, you know, it, that, that particular chip is pin compatible with the 386 motherboard, um, but it includes the 380, or 486 excuse me, instruction set along with one megabyte, one kilobyte of cache. Uh, which no original OG 386 ever came with onboard cache at all. Uh, but I do like that particular machine. Over here on the right, I've got my 486. So this is the one that has a 133 megahertz AMD AM5X86 running at 133 megahertz. And I believe this also has an AP43 Acer motherboard, which is a pretty cool motherboard. Um, it's on the higher end of 486 because it does include PCI and ISA slots. Uh, it's also, you know, I think a 94, 95, 96 era 486 motherboard that allows you to use a lot of these faster, higher end, later AMD and such 46 processors. Really gives you about a 75-ish megahertz Pentium equivalency, I think is their rating. Um, but this particular unit, I've got a 1.7 gigabyte hard disk drive from Seagate installed, along with um, well, actually, both of them. I went ahead and installed the GoTech floppy disk emulators because I've had the unfortunate experience of a lot of my floppy disk drives dying lately, and uh, the older ones are a lot more reliable than any of the newer ones, if you can even find any that are actually still made new that aren't connected to a USB cable and meant to be used externally. Um, they're just dying. They just It's just the way it is. It's unfortunate, but... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing what I can to keep my stock that I still have alive. Um, but I do like these cases. They have that late 80s, early 90s computer vibe. Um, you know, back when you had those computer shops where you'd go to and tell them what you wanted and you'd pick out your motherboard and how much stuff you wanted based on your budget. And uh, they'd throw together a computer for you. Um, you know, uh, my experience, I remember doing that a lot back in the day, and I didn't think they were, looking back on them, they weren't very reliable. I was always having motherboard issues. I mean, it was just a big hodgepodge of stuff that you had laying around in a store. And back then, you didn't really know, hey, is this good quality? Is this bad quality? You know, because you had so many new entrants into the game of personal computers, especially ones that you were building from scratch. Um, you know, you just kind of did what you could and hoped that it would continue working and doing what you needed it to do. But, uh, yeah, I, I like both of these, so that's why I kept these. Uh, the other ones were just some uh, other compact 386s. I had a Zenith um, Data Systems 386SX. It was missing a lot of parts and pieces, but I just had trouble getting that one to post. I went ahead and sold it on eBay. Um, again, one of the other Canon Innovas. Um, I had another IBM. PS2 model 70 that came with that. Um, I think it it tried to turn on, it tried to post, but there was something up with the uh, power supply, and I just I couldn't get it to to power on all the way. Um, and I, I didn't really feel like spending the hundred bucks or so to gamble on making it work with a new power supply. So I just went ahead and sold that to somebody that I think hopefully would enjoy it and would you know keep these things out of the scrap pile. That's really what it's all about. I mean. So many of these things ended up in the scrap pile in the mid-90s, late-90s, because, I mean, you were looking at those things, and 
It's like, oh, well, I got my new e-machine and all these things are slow pieces of crap just taking up space in my closet like this one right here. So everybody threw them away. And now you turn around and you look at them and you're like, oh, these things are rare. There's just about none of them left. And even the ones that are left, are they taken care of? Are they kind of beat up? Are the capacitors leaking? Are the batteries leaking, eating away at the motherboards? I mean, they don't make this stuff anymore. And with so many of them that have been e-cycled, it's hard to, uh, you know, wrap your head around the fact that, hey, these things that we all thought were pieces of junk now have a, a remnants of nostalgia with folks that, uh, you know, they're still fun to mess with. I think a lot of folks uh, enjoy the fact that, hey, you know, we played and had computer games on these as kids, but we were kids and we didn't have the money to get the better graphics cards or upgrade our processor or have, you know, the better joysticks or get a sound card that worked or, you know, any of that stuff. So you were always kind of like, oh, cool, Duke Nukem or Doom but I couldn't just quite get it to work right, or it kind of ran slow, so I had to put the screen the size of a postage stamp, and, you know, you were just kind of trying to make do, but you were a kid, and you thought it was awesome that the thing even started up anyway with this because you had an old crappy 386. You know, and I get it. So now you have people that are adults, they've got money, they've got time, they've got eBay, and they've got the internet. So what do you do? You're gathering these things, and you're kind of giving a, the middle finger to the past and saying, you know what? I'm in charge now. Yeah, that's right. So I'm gonna get the best video card and the best processor and the best old school computer that I can max out so that I can install all this stuff and enjoy it the way I wish I would have been able to enjoy it back in 1993 or four or five or one or whatever it was, you know? And I, I get that, you know? It's, I know it's kind of geeky because we're talking about computers, but it's really not all that different than, you know, nostalgia of a car, you know? I mean, what? 15 years ago, everybody thought these old Mustangs and Camaros were pieces of junk, especially the ones from the, you know, the late 80s, early 90s, and those are starting to become popular and valuable again. So, it's just one of those things that's kind of interesting. Well, I'm going to pop on over here because there's one other thing I want you to look at that I thought was pretty awesome. Now, what that is, is right here. This came in the stash, right? And you want to talk about one of those things, that, oh, I wish I had it? Well, this being my computer, there were two things that I wish that I had. Number one, a sound card, okay? Because MCA sound cards are basically unobtainium. And a CD-ROM drive. Only floppies going on here. Nothing but floppy business. Well, look at this. I wish I would have had this back in the day. This is the external CD-ROM drive by Backpack. Okay. This thing is awesome. I had to source and find an AC adapter for it, but no problem through the magic of eBay. But let me tell you, not only is this going to give me my coveted and always desired CD-ROM drive for my Model 70, but this is kind of a rare backpack in its own where it has a built-in sound card. Yes, via parallel port. So, it only works in Windows, that part sucks, but the CD-ROM drive works in Windows, DOS, anything. This only works in Windows, the sound card part, but the fact that you were able to add my CD-ROM drive and my sound card all in one awesome beige 80s 90s looking package hey you can't beat that yeah for real so that's all i've got here um let me know if you want me to go through any of these in more detail if you find any of these interesting or anything else i think that they're pretty cool some of you might as well if you uh went ahead and searched and found this video uh excuse me for my video skills Still getting used to this whole YouTube video making thing, but we'll, we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. So, yeah, again, just let me know in the comments 
Let me know what you would like to see. If you have any questions, let me know. And uh, look forward to doing uh, further videos. Thanks, guys. Bye.